Today we are doing lesson 8.2, Perimeters of Composite Figures, Day 2. Our I can statement for today, I can find perimeters of composite figures. So our first type of example here is estimating perimeter of composite figures that are on a uh, piece of graph paper. So just as a reminder on these problems, when we take a look at something that is the side length of a square, and I'm going to draw a couple of squares here and then change my color. So if I have the side length of a square like this, that's going to equal one unit. However, if I have something that looks like it is a diagonal line cut through a square, something that looks like that, well, that was kind of messy, but that's okay, you get the idea. That's going to be worth one and a half. That's because the diagonal of a square is a little bit longer than what the actual size of the square is. So let's go ahead and estimate. We're going to count the number of straight sides, the number of slants, and then we're going to add them together. Okay, so I'm going to start on A. I'm just going to count the sides here. One, two, three, four, five. Notice how these, even though it's on the same square, this side and this side count as different sides. The perimeter is the outside. Okay, I'm up to five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I have 12 straight sides. Then for the slants, I have one, two, three, four, and they're both worth, or they're all worth one and a half. So I'm gonna do four times one and a half. And it's saying estimate because it's not actually one and a half, it's the square root of two, which is like 1.41 something. So in estimating, it's really, we're gonna use that as one and a half. Okay, so I'm gonna start by doing one and a half times four, which is six. And then I am going to add on 12. So my answer for this one, 12 plus six, that's going to be 18 units squared or square units. They didn't give me units on my actual um, image there, so that's why I have to use the word units for my label instead of, say, inches or feet. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our next one. So here, everything is a slant. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I have 14, and those are gonna be times one and a half. So 14 times one and a half gives me a total of 21. And then again, my label is going to be units squared. Oh, my goodness. No, it's not, it's gonna be units. I was thinking about area. Area is always in square units, but perimeter is just plain old units. When we start finding the inside amounts, that's when we're gonna do unit squared. But this is just a straight side length, even though it's kind of kind of gotten bent around the outside of that shape. All right, let's take a look at our next one. So for this next type of problem, they do tell us what the units are and we need to use some calculations to help us find our perimeter. So for these problems, the first thing you need to do is look for missing sides. A has a missing side on the top. This is gonna be seven. That's because this part and this part are the same. They're on a rectangle and they're across from each other. I don't need to worry about this dotted line. That is on the inside of the shape. So I'm just gonna ignore that it's there. I'm gonna add what's on the outside of my shape. So I'm gonna start at the top, seven, plus four, plus seven, plus three, plus five. All right, so now I'm gonna add those together. Seven plus four, plus seven, plus three, plus five, and that is gonna give me a total of 26. And that is going to be meters. All right, let's take a look at our next one. So this time I have a circle and I have a rectangle. And again, I only want the outside part. So remember for our circle, the circumference equals pi times diameter. So for the circle part here, I'm doing five, that's my diameter. 
and we're going to use 3.14 for pi. All right, so I'm going to do 3.14 times 5. That's going to give me 15.7. That's the curve part here, this part and this part together. We also need the top and the bottom. This is going to be 8. Again, it's always a good idea to look for those missing sides before you get started. All right, so this is 8 and this is 8. So I'm going to add on to my 15.7. I'm going to add an 8 and another 8 to it. So when I do that, I get 31.7, and that's going to be inches. Okay, go ahead and pause the video and try these three on your own. Okay, let's check our work. So let's start with missing sides here. For number one, this top part's gonna be 10 centimeters. This is the diameter, it's gonna be eight because this part is eight. It is not a side, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it in there because we need to find the circumference of this circle. Okay. So for my semicircle, I'm gonna do pi times diameter for circumference, but I'm gonna divide it by two because it's only half a circle, it's not a full circle. And my last one, go back, I had two semicircles together made one full circle. But this time I only have one semicircle, so I've got to divide by two. So I'm going to do 3.14 times 8, which is my diameter, divided by 2. So 3.14 times 8 divided by 2 is going to give me 12 and 56 hundredths. Then I need to add on the straight sides that I have. So I have 10. 8 and another 10. And I'm adding all of those on to my 12 and 56 hundredths. Again, we're only adding what's on the outside. So we have 40 and 56 hundredths and that's going to be centimeters. It did not say to round in the direction so I'm not going to round my answer. All right, let's take a look at this next one. Missing side, this part is six. That's because the top part's six. There's a dotted line here, but it doesn't matter. That's on the inside. I'm only adding what's on the outside. So now that I have my missing side, I'm gonna just write out my um, addition problem. So I'm gonna start here at the top. Four plus six plus five plus six, plus two, plus five. This side's five. Okay, so we have all our sides here. Now we just need to add things together. And it looks like I get 28 inches. Okay, let's take a look at our next one. This one also has some missing sides. I have this one at the top, and I have to do a little subtraction to find it. This bottom is 10, and this part is 5, so that means this part's got to be 5, because 5 plus 5 equals 10. All right, so now on this other part, here this little part's 1, so that means this little part is 1. And this part is three, so this part is three. Or if I wanted to, I could add those two together and count that whole side as four. All right, so now I have all my sides I'm ready to add. I'm gonna start with this five. Five plus one plus another five plus another one plus three plus 10 plus three. 
Okay, and then I'm going to add all of that up and I am going to get 28 centimeters. All right, let's take a look at this next one. You are having a swimming pool installed. Find the perimeter of the pool. All right, so that's what we're doing for this first step. Let's see, I am missing this side and this side, and I'm gonna to have to do a little subtraction to get it. So I'm going to do 40. This part is 40. Minus 12, because this part's 12. And then that's gonna tell me this side, which is 28. Oh, my goodness. Didn't mean to do that. So this side is 28, this part right here, because 28 plus 12 equals 40. Then I'm going to find this side. So I have to do 28 minus 12, and I get 16 for this little part. That's for this part. Okay, so now I'm ready to add all my sides together. I'm going to start with the top, 40 plus 28 plus 12, plus 16, plus another 12, and another 28. Let me make sure I have all my numbers here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 40, 28, 12, 16. 28 and 12, I got those last two flipped in order. Okay, I've got everything. All right, so now I am ready to add everything up. So 40 plus 28 plus 12 plus 16 plus another 12 plus another 28, and I get 136, and that's going to be feet. That's my answer for the first part. Then it says tiling costs $15 per yard. How much will it cost to put tiles along the edge of the pool? Well, I know that three feet equals the same thing as one yard. So I'm going to take my number of feet, 136. Um, actually, I'm going to do, do this a couple ways. I'm going to change my um, cost per yard to cost per foot by dividing by three. I could also divide this one by three, but this doesn't divide evenly, so I'm gonna just divide this one. Okay, 15 divided by three tells me that it's going to be a cost of $5 per foot. So now I'm gonna do 136, and I'm gonna multiply times five. And 136 times 5 gives me $680. Now I could have also done 136 divided by 3 and then taken that times 15. And it'll still give me the same answer. You can do it either way. All right. This is our last one here. It says you are buying an invisible dog fence around burying, sorry, you are burying an invisible dog fence around the perimeter of your yard. How many feet of fencing do you need? And then the fence costs $10 per foot. How much will it cost to buy the fence? So go ahead and pause the video and try these problems. All right, let's check our answers. So this part is gonna be 40, because this part's 40, and this part is going to be 50, because this part is 50. We are also missing this side right here. If I do 60 minus 25, then I will get my answer for that part, which is 35. All right, so now I'm ready to write out my problem, 40 plus 50, plus 25, 
plus 50 plus 35 plus 40 plus 60. Let me make sure my number of sides and number of numbers work. It's the same. So let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 different numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, I'm good. Now I just need to add. So 40 plus 50 plus 25 plus another 50 plus 35 plus 40 plus 60 gives me 300, 300 feet. Okay, fence costs $10 per foot. How much will it cost to buy the fence? Well, I'm gonna take my 300, I'm gonna multiply times 10, and that's going to tell me that it's going to cost me $3,000 to buy that fence.